Okay, it's now 635. I think we're going to start. Um, I'm just going to say good evening again and thank you for joining us for this update of the Brick Township Wide Dredging Permit. Uh, I'm Carol Besky, the Director of Public Involvement from Act Engineers, and I'm here along with the rest of our Act Anchor team, Eric Racina, who is the Program Manager. We have Jeanetta Dix, Project Manager, and Travis Merritt, who is our Design Engineer. We also have our your Township Engineer, Alyssa Cummings, is with us. And tonight we're going to update you on the permit application process and talk about what having a dredge permit means to you as a concerned resident and what you will be able to do to dredge your slip. The citywide permit will allow you to proceed with your dredging needs without having to personally deal with the expenses, dollars, hassle, complications that you would have to go through as an individual to obtain a permit from the New Jersey DEP or the US Army Corps of Engineers. And you do need both permits. Once the city has this permit, oh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop right there because I have an important announcement. We also have our, um, our business administrator, uh, Joanne has just joined us. So Joanne Begin is also on here too. And, and I think that's very important for all of you to know. So, Going back to why you want this, why this permit is so important to you, once the city has that permit, you will be able to hire a dredging company and move forward with any of the dredging that you want to do. So what we're going to do this evening is go through a brief PowerPoint and uh, that's going to be presented by Janetta, who's going to go over all the information that we have gathered from the bathymetric surveys and the samplings that we have completed as well as the permit schedule and then the process of once the permit is received by Brick Township. So as Jeanetta goes through the PowerPoint, um, you can see on your screens that you have an ability, there's a Q&A and there's also a chat area. So what we're going to do is you can type questions into that as we're going through the presentation or it, if you choose to at the very end, after we the PowerPoint presentation, we will also take live questions um, for you to um, raise your hand and we will be calling on everybody. I just want to assure you that everybody will have a chance to have their question answered tonight, this meaning we, as best we can answer you at this point. But we will go, we have no time limit on this, so we can go on as long as we need to, to make sure that everybody's question is answered. So um, I think at this point, Jeanetta, you can move into the PowerPoint. Thanks, Carol. And, and we, I mean, it's a, it's a fairly uh, quick um, PowerPoint presentation. There's not a whole lot of slides. We know it's probably more important um, to answer your questions. So like Carol said, please, you know, type them in there if um, it's appropriate to answer them during a slide, we'll certainly do that. All of you that sent me um, questions um, beforehand, I have tried to incorporate those answers as well into, um, into the presentation. So in 2019, um, ACT Engineers was hired by Brick Township to complete a township-wide um, bathymetry survey, which is basically soundings, um, determining the depth of the waters of um, all of Brick Township's waters. And Brick Township, we believe, has the most shoreline of any municipality in the state. So it was quite an endeavor. Um, we, and yes, I'm sorry, we, we are recording um, this um, presentation. Um, so we'll, and we'll post it afterwards on the Township website so you can go back and listen to it um, and see it if you'd like. Thank, thanks, Alyssa. So we think uh, Brick Township has more shoreline than any other municipality in the state of New Jersey. It was quite um, a large endeavor, but we got it done. Um, you're seeing an overview of the township-wide bathymetry. You're, uh, the blue lines are state and federal channels. We did not survey those. Um, any data um, in those navigational areas comes from the Army Corps of Engineers or the Department of Transportation. 
On the left side of the screen, you'll see a color legend that starts at the bottom with a brown color. That is an elevation of zero. There's no water there at mean low water. And moving up the scale, you'll see the depth of water at mean low tide. Most dredging permit applications allow for um, dredging of five feet mean low water plus an additional one foot over dredge. So that second line of blue there is um, typically anything in that line and, and lower is um, eligible for per, eligible for dredging under the permit application. We surveyed all of the um, entire frontage of the um, of the township that includes places like Seawood Harbor and included um, 20 something uh, marinas as well. The survey pretty much hugged the shoreline uh, within about 100 feet of the bulkhead or the natural shoreline. If there's not a bulkhead in some areas, it goes out almost 300 feet. So it's a really good coverage of um, the entire uh, township and a vital part of any dredging permit application. Next slide. So all of the areas that were um, surveyed, um, we've chosen a few tonight. We've chosen the five primary areas, I believe. Um, and we've zoomed in and you can see, for example, this is Najeko uh, Lagoon. Um, and we have outlined the elevation um, five to six feet mean low water. That, that blue and anything below that in the um, legend would be eligible for uh, dredging under the permit. So you can see here, um, Najeko, um, you know, has some, some blue water. They have some navigation right down the middle, um, but along the edges and then along the bay front there, you can see some yellow um, and some brown. Uh, next slide. This is Long Pond area. Um, no blue here, so um, lots of dredging um, to be required to be um, done here. Um, you, the black outline is the dredge prism. We typically um, surveyed and we typically um, apply for permits for dredging uh, within five feet of the bulkhead. We generally do not go any closer to the bulkhead because we don't know uh, the condition of the bulkhead and we don't want to compromise that shore protection structure. And here you can see the dredge prism only comes out a certain um, number of feet, you know, really past the end of the docks, but the survey data goes you know, a lot further than that. So you can see kind of the coverage here. And like I said, we have these maps for um, the entire township and um, we will be providing these um, either some type of upload, uh, Google link, a GIS, some type of upload um, or certainly accessible through the township uh, website. We're still kind of wrestling with, you know, the best way. They're big files. So we're kind of wrestling with the best way to, to roll these out. Next slide. This is um, Upper Branch of Beaver Dam Creek. Um, these, these slides are five priority areas that we initially identified that needed dredging. Um, you can see the upper reaches there of the man-made uh, lagoons. Uh, the silt's not working its way in there. They have lots of deep water there, lots of dark blue. But um, certainly if you're, if you're on here and you're from Upper branch of Beaverdam Creek, you, you know you hug the shoreline over there towards the north and um, that, that there's a little bit of water there. You'll see the yellow, which is three to four feet, um, but lots of browns and peachy colors, which, you know, indicates, you know, not a lot of water at mean low tide. This is um, Superior Lagoon. Um, I think this is what, um, what, what's commonly known as Seawood Harbor, I, I think, I'm pretty sure. Um, you can see here that the internal lagoons, uh, lots of dark blue, lots of deep water there. Um, you know, some, some areas with, you know, nine feet or more of water, but getting in and out of there, um, obviously a struggle. You can see how skinny the light blue is, you know, at only four to five feet. Um, and then certainly along the edges and then along the bay front, you know, a lot of darker colors. Here's Shore Acres. Um, kind of the same, um, more of the same, you know, once you get way into these man-made lagoons, there's some pretty good, you know, navigable water, but where it's silting up at, like you would expect at the mouths and along the bayfront area. Um, so here's, and also if you look really closely, you know, you can see right along the bulkhead, um, you know, there's some, 
some shallow areas like that you would expect. But also this is, uh, so this is shore acres. So here's a close-up version of a close-up view of um, Nijeko Lagoon. And this is showing that five foot offset to the bulkhead. Um, it, it, sometimes it looks like it's more than five feet. Um, it's shown, you know, for graphical, for demonstration purposes, but, but this is the five foot offset. Um, we would never recommend that you dredge any closer than that to the bulkhead, just to um, not jeopardize the, the integrity of that structure. And like, um, like I said a few minutes ago, we are um, working on rolling out all of this bathymetry, all of this data to the marina owners, to waterfront property owners, to all of you. Um, I, ideally, you'll be able to either type your address in or type your, your waterfront area in, you know, whatever your Seaview Harbor or whatever, um, Seawood Harbor. Um, whatever your location is, you could zoom in. This color legend stays with the mapping. Um, so we're, we'll roll these out and everyone will have access to this data so that you can see, although you, you know, but you can see what your um, soundings, what your water depths look like, and you can target the areas where you would like to hire a um, contractor to dredge, you know, your boat slips or, you know, your area. This is um, our project schedule. Um, this is kind of where we've been and where we're going. Um, can't see that bottom part. Um, May through December of 2019, we, com we completed the bathymetric survey. You probably saw our, hopefully you saw our boat out there and waved to us. In June of 2019 um, and July, August of 2020, we collected sediment samples. We grabbed about 100 samples and had them analyzed for grain size. When a permit application is submitted to the DEP and to the Army Corps of Engineers, they require sediment sampling. The first round of sediment sampling is a physical analysis to determine the percent of fine material that's in a sample. If there is less than 10% fine material, then you're free to, to dredge under that permit. If there's more than 10% fine material, then additional sampling is required. Chem a chemical analysis is required. We've completed some chemical analysis for these pri priority areas, um, but, but not, it's expensive. So not, not everywhere, but, um, but we're, we have done quite a bit of the upfront um, work to allow people to use um, eventually the permit that's gonna allow you to dredge. In October, we submitted the, um, a pilot application um, for dredging of about 2,800, 2,100 cubic yards of material from Nijeko Lagoon. That permit was approved by the um, DEP in uh, 2021, January of this year. Um, in April of this year, just last month, we submitted the permit application for dredging of all of Brick Township uh, waters. Um, it's a huge application. It proposes over um, the life of the permit, um, dredging about 1.8 million cubic yards. The DEP uh, permit is good for five years and can be renewed for another five. The Army Corps of Engineers permit is good for 10 years. So once a dredging permit application, a dredging permit is approved, there's a 10 year window where you're allowed um, to, to author you're authorized to dredge under that approval. DEP review time is about four or five months. If you look back up at Najeko, you can see it was right around four months. Army Corps, um, they do not have any legislative clocks that they have to review a permit application under. Unlike the DEP, the DEP has legislative requirements. They have to issue a permit within a certain amount of time, um, issue a permit decision within a certain amount of time. Army Corps doesn't have those type of restrictions. So they generally take about twice as long um, as a DEP review. Um, just last week, we submitted an application um, for the placement of dredge material for um, the Nijeko Lagoon material. 
whenever a dredge permit application is submitted, um, an applicant must identify where the dredged material will be beneficially reused, where it will be placed or deposited. And in the Jekko Lagoon permit, uh, we had identified the Windward Beach uh, location to place this sandy material. Um, it, that required another DEP permit to put the material on the beach. Um, so that is, that's pending. And I can't see it, but I think there's, because of my, there's one more line down there that talks about- Dredge restrictions, the January 1 to May 31. So we, we fully expect that any dredge approval issued by the DEP and the Army Corps of Engineers will have a timing restriction from January 1 to May 31st of any year um, for the protection of winter flounder. Um, so there is a window there where you're prohibited from dredging. So you, you kind of limit, so we're limited, we're not kind of, we are limited um, from throughout the year of when we can legally, uh, when we can legally dredge. Uh, these are our dredging uh, next steps. So once the um, township uh, permit application is approved um, and it's issued with any conditions or timing restrictions, um, it is a township-wide permit that we um, intend or expect to be able to be used by um, any waterfront homeowner or any marina uh, within a certain amount of you know, guidelines. Um, we, you would have to coordinate uh, with the township um, on uh, what kind of permit, on a type of permit that would, a local permit that would be required. When we submitted this permit application, Brick Township signed as the applicant, but certainly um, they don't own, the township does not own um, the water areas. You know, if, if it's a, a Tidelands license or a Tidelands grant, you either own it or you rent it for your dock. So, um, and obviously, you know, all of the township waterfront residents didn't sign the permit application. So the way the DEP and the Army Corps of Engineers have agreed to issue these township-wide permits is to put some mechanism in place that when a specific property owner decides that she would like to dredge, that there's a local permit process and there's some oversight. The, the permit is issued in the township's name. The township is the applicant. So if there were any violations or uh, misuse of that permit, then um, that would come back to the township. So the township certainly has a vested interest in making sure that anybody who uses their permit, you know, uses it appropriately. Um, once you um, decide you want to dredge and you coordinate with the township, um, if one of the questions that just popped up was where does the material go? Our permit application um, has a location for the first 50,000 cubic yards of material to go to dredge hole 25. Um, after the initial 20, 50,000 cubic yards goes there, then um, we'll start searching for um, additional uh, dredge placement uh, locations. Um, We've talked about uh, public works. We've talked about trucking to um, beneficial reuse sites like um, in South Jersey and Cape May County, we truck to you know, turf farms and nurseries, uh, horticulture nurseries. They use it as you know, soil supplement. Um, it it's used to be considered a spoil. It used to be considered a one-time you know, kind of dirty, stinky um, uh, material. Um, it's no longer, Consider that it's considered a renewable resource. Um, and the intent is to beneficially reuse this material. Um, there's quite a bit of nature preserves and wetlands in and around Brick Township. There's possibly some opportunities to use the dredge material for some resiliency projects that would serve really two purposes. It would be a, a terrific way to beneficially reuse the dredge material. It would keep it um, back in the system, you know, from whence it came. And it would also provide some flood resiliency and also um, restore some drowning or um, subsiding wetlands. So it, it's, it's the hardest part of dredging is where the material goes and how to beneficially reuse it and how to do that um, cost effectively. You know, Brick Township doesn't have any confined disposal facilities, any CDFs. 
You'll see them if you're a boater, you'll see them out in the water sometime um, covered with, you know, common reed or Phragmites. Um, they were built, you know, back when dredging was initially done and they were built really near the dredging location and nobody really thought ahead to, you know, maybe they have a capacity that we have to empty eventually. So they're kind of one and done. So definitely dredge material disposal beneficial reuse is, um, you know, is the hardest, is the hardest thing. And, and the township is, is definitely, I don't think, I think I'm, I'll say that I believe the township is, you know, willing to work with the residents and help identify some of these locations, you know, to, as much as we can. Um, once you get through that local permitting and we identify, help you identify a disposal site, then you would engage with a um, qualified, you know, dredging contractor. And again, the permit is issued to Brick Township. So, you know, we just want to make sure that you're using a reputable, you know, dredging firm. And um, I expect we can, you know, probably help also help with, you know, finding those, you know, qualified contractors. What I forget, Carol? Well, I just wanted you to just address a little bit about the AUD, the, the fact that uh, the 50,000 cubic yards, how that the permit can be modified so that there's no angst about that. Exactly. So we expect, um, so we have applied for a township wide permit. We've identified Dredge Hall 25 as um, the first location for dredge material disposal, about 50,000 cubic yards. The permit will be approved. Um, I say that confidently, don't I? The permit will be approved, um, authorizing over the 10 year life um, about almost 2 million cubic yards of material. So Obviously, we have to find and identify um, additional, you know, dredge material disposal, deposition areas, beneficial reuse areas. Whenever we do that, we, we go back to the regulators and we add that additional dredge. Um, we do a very minor modification. Um, it's usually a $500 application fee. If there are a number of residents that are using the same site, we can do one, you know, modification. Um, so we go back routinely, periodically, frequently, and modify um, the approved permit to identify these additional areas as they come online. And, and I have to tell you, I've been doing this about 32 years, and um, the number of, of potential sites that will accept dredge material is infinitely greater than it ever has been, um, you know, in, in the past, you know, three decades. So that is the presentation. Um, if you have, um, we're going to open it up for questions. I know there's, I'm seeing there's five or four or five in the chat and the Q&A. Um, Eric Rosina, our vice president, is um, monitoring those and will, um, you know, uh, moderate those. If you want to type in questions, if you want to raise your hand, um, there's, a, there's a way to do that on... Yeah, yeah. on the bottom of your screen that you can raise your hand, there's a little uh, a place that says raise hand. And so if you want to get in the queue for, for actually talking or, or um, we, we will get to those for what, whomever chooses to have that option. So, um, so, so I'll pose the first question here that we have in the, in the Q&A is, uh, you're gonna address the township starting to dredge the river entrance to Najeko. Uh, and asking for release from Sandy Shoaling uh, since 2014 with the county and the township. So I'll pose that one to the to our township reps that are on, on online here. There are a couple questions to that end. Uh, Alyssa, if you would, or Joanne, need to unmute. The township had selected these five areas as priority areas based on what we knew about the bathymetry, and and res and I knew that from residential complaints. So thank you. Um, and we were discussing initially funding these for construction and seeking reimbursement through a special assessment for those areas. So that would be for the mouths of the lagoon, entrances only, where no one's going to take any kind of responsibility, the township would, would fund those. I don't, I'm not saying back to the back of the bulkhead or along the man-made lagoon, but at the entrances of the lagoons. Thank you. Uh, similar question, how do we get the entrance of the lagoon, not personal property dredged? Again, that, uh, that's something that I think the township, and I know somebody had also posted a chat about Baywood being difficult, and I know Baywood 
they even said it's three to four feet at low tide. Um, our priority areas were areas where there was zero feet at low tide. So when we identified five of them, um, worst is first. If the township initiated a dredging project in your vicinity, a special assessment will be done and we would recoup the funds. Okay. Um, what part is the town paying for? As I understand, the property owners are responsible for areas in front of our slips. This is similar to the last one, uh, but the mouths of lagoons, lagoons themselves uh, should be the town's responsibility. I think we've answered that. You know, the town, As far as I know, the township, the township isn't obligated to dredge anywhere in the water. I can't find a single regulation that requires it. This is something that the township had committed to do as an idea because the idea of dredging seems simple to the average person. And when I thought about it, it's because they don't understand the investment in survey, the hydrographic information, the engineering, the permitting, the soil testing, and the finding of a contractor. So I thought if the township could address all of that, I mean, that's half the cost. In a lot of cases, that's over half the cost, especially if you're talking about your backyard slip. Um, so the idea was to get a township wide permit so that you could just come to town hall, apply for a permit. We, we would like to pre-qualify a list of contractors. If you really wanted to use somebody that wasn't on our list, you could certainly have them submit to us to be qualified. I just want to be very cautious that we don't you just don't hire Greg up the street with a backhoe to start digging in your backyard because he's a good friend of yours. I mean, these permits have a lot of conditions and as the applicant, I don't want to risk any responsibility for the township risking a violation. Okay. Uh, the town of Bayhead has a dire need of sand and dredge uh, material to fill 10 foot high erosion on their beaches and dunes. This is headlines in local media and I'll just quick answer that uh, where where material is suitable, uh, where we have sands greater than 90% uh, sand, we can reutilize that material for, for uh, beach deposition, uh, for areas, for material that is less than 90, you know, up to 70, there's, you know, we can put it on non-bathing beaches. I mean, the state's got standards for, for where these things go. Um, and beyond that, you know, when we have a lot of fine grain material, it is, you know, those, those materials are really good for the marshes uh, systems. So there's places to all to utilize this material, but each one of those projects requires its own individual permitting uh, that would have to be done, but we could modify our permit, the BRICS permit to point to those places um, as potential places for the reuse of that material. Uh, there's some within the town, some outside, you know, location has a lot to do with it close by you know, all those things add to cost. So just wanted to answer that one. Um, we've talked about priority areas and why they were selected. Yeah, just, just to add, just to make sure everyone understands the, uh, and, and Alyssa just touched on it, but the fact is that the town is looking at worst case scenarios, so there has to be some way to make selections for where to start. And just to reinforce the, you know, the areas that were the most impacted with the least, uh, with the most uh, material to be removed is how the order is going, it has been looked at for these areas. I would also like to point out with an estimated 1.8 million cubic yards that is possible to be dredged in the municipality. Just the funding for that alone, it would take years for us to, to get to maybe the first million. So the op option to have you dredge your boat slip or if you own a marina to dredge your marina seemed like something that would be very palatable to a large portion of the population. The area on the, another question from um, the area on the south side of Long Pond, did not show dredge to where my dock will terminate about 100 foot north of Little Cove on the peninsula. Why will the dredge be able to be expanded to include it? Uh, the dredge prisms were shown 100 foot from all existing docks, so we will so we will look at that um, area specifically. Uh, I would ask you to look at the look at the drawings and contact us at the brick dredging at Act Engineers, and we can look at that specific situation. 
Uh, but the, the intent of the permit application is to cover everything. We've, Pretty much we've, everything. Correct. We've, we've added, we've, and this was on another question. Uh, we have surveyed all of the developed shoreline uh, for navigable areas. Uh, and reason being we didn't go to the non-developed shorelines is we have to, we have offsets from those anyway uh, in the rules for what, how close we can get. And typically the non-developed shorelines are uh, areas where there's a state channel or a federal channel uh, close by. So. Um, so there was a question about why Nijeko was chosen as a priority. Um, and it's, it's one of the lo worst locations in town, Long Pond and Nijeko. Nijeko was typically smaller in area and because it historically has sand, which is far easier to dispose of than silts. And we initially thought we had um, a a placement area right there at the um, at the beach club at the Nijeko you know beach club and then when we started looking at the volume so it made sense you know here's a an easy simple small pilot dredging application you know location and right there you know right down the street we could truck it you know four or five houses down and use it on the um, on the bay club you know property but when we started looking at the volume of of material, then it would require filling that. We would lose those trees. It would just, it, it didn't make any sense at that point, but um, but it was a logical, you know, let, let's let's tee this up and try it. Um, and we were successful, you know, in getting that permit. And, and that opened a great deal of conversation with the regulators on, on how a permit application of this size and this magnitude and this many different property owners, you know, could be, you know, stepped out, um, you know, DEP doesn't want to see, you know, 600 small permit applications. Um, it's just not efficient. So they were agreeable to this and Nijeko was a way to open these lines of communication with all the regulators. Uh, well, the entrance of sea, well, it says seafood harbor, but I think it's seawood harbor. Uh, be eligible for town funded dredge. Again, you know. I, again, I, I just want to be clear. If it's funded initially through the township, it would, the township would seek to re recoup those costs through a special assessment. So it, it may be less expensive if you can do it on your own as an association. Um, but yes, the mouth of the Seawood Harbor and the mouth of any lagoon where no one has direct boat slip access, it's not strictly behind one person's home. Uh, that's why these pilot projects were selected. Okay. Uh, can we get an estimate as to when the dredging of Nijeko Lagoon will be dredged? We talked about the permitting for that, uh, Janetta. So, so we have... We have the dredging permit. Um, we do not have the permit yet for placement of the material on Windward Beach, um, but that's where it was, um, it's proposed to go. We have timing restrictions. We can't dredge between January 1 and May 31st. So, um, and we probably don't wanna dredge in the middle of the summer. Um, so that further limits your dredging, you know, window if you take out, you know, the summer season. Um, so typically we, we prefer to dredge in, you know, late fall, early winter, um, you know, sometime September through December really is where our dredge window is, you know, boiled down to. So um, that, that would be the, I, I don't want to say it's, I don't want to say it's this fall, uh, but the permits will be in place. And if we can figure out the, um, you know, the special assessment, then um, it, it could be this fall. So we have a couple of questions here about um, the five foot offset on these on these dredge prisms uh, for bulkheads and whether that's in a, inside a lagoon or on the bayfront. Uh, the reason being, so there's, there's, the, there's a couple of rationale for why the permit is written the way it is. Uh, typically, if you're going to need a bulkhead replacement, uh, if those bulkheads uh, are aging or in disrepair, they will, you will need the, an individual permit to, or a, a bulkhead permit to do that and to include the five feet of bulk dredging in those areas uh, at that time. On a larger contract, most 
contract, most dredging contractors will not come within five feet of a bulkhead if they don't know the age of those bulkheads. And so when you're doing this on a, on a township wide basis, um, that offset is, is held uh, to, because the contractor is not gonna do that anyway because they don't wanna take that liability on. Uh, the exception to that is where there are stormwater outfalls. Um, oh, I forgot that. That, that fall, that, that uh, discharge to the bay. Those stormwater outfalls, are, we will dredge right up to those uh, about a bucket width, you know, two, two foot wide to make sure that those outfalls can drain properly. So just a couple of, answer a couple of questions for that. Uh, cost estimates for dredging of individual boat slips. This is always the, 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 uh, a question that we get in a lot of, lot of these uh, sessions. And that really depends on where the material is going and what type of material it is. And again, how big the projects are. So if you can, what we found is in order to keep costs low, uh, join with your neighbors. The larger the project gets, the lower the unit cost gets uh, to mobilize some of this equipment is significant. Uh, so if you, can, if you can pair those up with your neighbors um, and with your surrounding property owners, that will save you money. Also, um, again, going back to, to work, if the township does this work, the, town, the town's obligated to do all that work at prevailing wage um, and with, with union labor. And what we find is that a lot of times the homeowners can do a lot better uh, on, on the private market. So just, you know, two couple ways to save money on that. Uh, but ultimately it's, it's a lot, we're seeing contractors price these things on a cubic yard basis. Um, and so, you know. Eric, I think perhaps it would be helpful to give them kind of a rough estimate of what we've been seeing in terms of, of um, whether it's, it's trucking or. I mean, sure. So, Prices range anywhere from on a mechanical dredging project at the high end of about $100 a cubic yard uh, to a hydraulic project that's a large project to as low as $30 to $40 a cubic yard. So it 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 can range those range is significant and it like I said it varies based on the size of the project. Um, so if you have a lot of frontage uh, at your property. Um, add that frontage up and you know, multiply by the depth and come up with a cubic yardage basis and you'll have an, an estimate there for your property. And just to, just to clarify, the township as a public contracting, under public contracting law, the township has to use labor, a uh, union labor prevailing wages. But, but if I own a, a boat slip and I wanna hire a dredger, I do not, a private individual does not have to use um, a union shop or, or, or pay prevailing wages. So it, it, it could be a little cheaper. I don't know if that was clear, there was a subsequent question about why do we have to use you know, union labor. Township does, it's, it's public contracting law. Uh, how long does dredging take? Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna defer that one to, to Travis here. Here's our, our resident engineer here. Um, and again, depends on the, probably the method. He'll tell you the methodology and size of contract. Yeah, it, it does depend a lot on the methodology, but the uh, the basic geometry and water depths that we're talking about here, the, the dredging equipment that's suitable for that, you're probably talking between 200 to 500 yards per day um, for a lot of these lagoons and areas. A little slower when you start talking about a, a private slip or an individual slip, um, but that's a good thumbnail. And is it tidal? Does it does the tide make a difference, Travis? If it's high tide, you can float those barges quicker in and out of there if you're floating them somewhere than low tide? It can in the most heavily impacted areas. We don't have as large of a tidal swing in, in a lot of the areas here. Um, uh, so they should be able to work through most of the tidal cycle once you get started. But in the very shallow areas, it'll make a difference. Thank you. Okay, uh, we do have a couple, of, we have a hand up from Nancy Golden. I will uh, open that up. Hi, Nancy. Hi, um, it's Nancy and Fred Golden. Um, uh, Hi. <laughs> her computer works better. <laughs> so I'm the president of the Seawood Harbor Property Owners Association. Um, we thank you very much for uh, all the work that you've done to get this permit done and Alyssa for your ongoing and Joanne for your ongoing attention to these really critical infrastructure needs. 
Um, so our largest need is obviously the entrance, but also the channel. It's about 100 yards long that takes you into our lagoons. And there are no homeowners. There are no lots uh, that are owned. It's a federal wetlands area. So um, A, my first question is, we are not a deeded HOA. I'm not sure if you're aware of that or not, but our HOA is voluntary and roughly 60% of the homes are not members. So if in fact the township does front the funds to dredge the channel and the mouth of the lagoon, how will the assessment be done is my first question. And then second of all, our largest issue is a sandbar in the middle of the mouth of the lagoon that is in a wetlands marsh. And unless it is bulkheaded or some type of retainer, it's just gonna continue to resilt. We paid for our own private dredge, as you know, two years ago, and it's already silted in from that sandbar. So how to address that particular situation? I, I would like to default to Janetta on how to address that situation, but the property across from Seawood Harbor is federal preserved part of the Forsyth Wildlife Refuge. They're, they're not gonna let you construct anything on that land. Um, I don't know whether there's something that could be done water word of that that the DEP would allow you to do to, to try and, I don't know, help silt in a particular direction. Um, I will leave that to Janetta. She's far better of an expert at that than I certainly am. So I was going to defer to Travis, but I, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I will say um, we, we have a five foot offset from bulkheads. We have a 25 foot offset, standard offset from wetlands and natural shorelines. Uh, we, we do expect under the Army Corps of Engineers review of the permit application that the federal agencies, uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, National Marine, Sur National Marine Fisheries, that, that we do expect them to scrutinize the permit application for these, for this area specifically and for other areas that are adjacent to federal refuge. Um, it, it's tough. It's really tough to even touch a federal, you know, preservation area. Um, is that to say that there isn't some type of unique shoreline restoration, planting, natural, you know, berm type thing with vegetation that would be acceptable to them and would also serve your purpose? I mean, maybe, but but it's a it, it's a heavy lift of permitting, and and I, I recognize that this is a a chronic problem, and and until something is done, it continues to happen, you know, year after year. Um, Travis, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, no, uh, there's a lot of solutions from an engineer's purely engineering standpoint uh, for that situation. I know we, we all know that area well. I think it's a, it's a regulatory constraint um, that there's not a lot of wiggle room with. So I just want to give you a little bit of a, of a current status. Uh, the, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, who owns a lot of land, a lot of the undeveloped marshland around Brick, in Brick Township, um, recognizes that they are losing shorelines and they are losing their wetlands. Uh, there are several pilot projects being pursued in New Jersey right now um, that where they are restoring those and trying to strengthen those uh, in the name of resiliency, in the name of man maintaining those wetlands. It is a developing policy um, for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, that like like Travis says, there's a lot of there. There are engineering solutions to this. It's a matter of balancing um, federal directives for each of these agencies and being able to manage all manage through all of that. So as Junetta said, there's there's a lot of permitting that goes on to make that happen. So we are working on it. We are aware of it. We are aware of the players um, and the current status of where things are right now. And, and we will certainly. I mean, we, we know, we know where the trouble spots are. We know why they're trouble spots. Um, I mean, please don't think that we submit a permit application and then, you know, we sit back and, and four to nine months later, you know, they hand us a, an approval. There's definitely a dialogue. There's definitely um, give and take. They're, they ask questions, we respond, you know, we push back. 
So, um, you know, this is something that that's definitely on our radar and that during the permit review and negotiation process, then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly throw some ideas out there and see what they say. Um, you know, we're, we're not, you know, in a vacuum here. With respect to the special assessment, that would ultimately be uh, figured out by, for, by the tax assessor. But typically, it's it's who benefits. I mean, he looks at a plan and says, you know, what what homes will have greater access to by boat to their homes by by clearing this area, and that's who we get the special assessment. Thank you. I'm putting it, we've, we've touched on a lot of these, uh, so I'm putting in that we, these questions have been answered live. Um, so I'm just kind of going through these. Uh, one of them is uh, allowing waterways to be dredged after May 31st, uh, even of this year. Uh, again, that would be waterway dependent, and that would be, um, I mean, that would be a township decision there, Alyssa, if you wanted to dredge during the summer. Um. So we don't have a contractor lined up to dredge after May 31st. Um, and I would have to publicly bid it. And I could bid it as a turnkey operation. Um, the question would be without the windward permit, would the DEP let us dredge and have the materials sit in the Najeko parking lot for the summer until we have the DEP permit to place the material at windward? Hmm. I don't know about that. I don't know about that, Miss Miss. I, I don't, but that's that's my <laughs> thought process on it. I mean, I'm trying to find ways to do it here, and it, it's a very complex situation. And it, as soon as I feel like we have the answer to one thing, there's another regulatory issue that either I forgot or it, I didn't know about. So I, it's a process. I mean, we're not going to have the Windward Beach permit until probably, you know, August, September, you know, so you're, you're realistically, you're looking at, at late, you know, mid, late fall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one, one of the questions that has been posted, and I think it bears a little bit of uh, attention, and it was a question of uh, if you have enough water depth by your property, are you still required to dredge? And I think, that, you know, the, the the big answer to that is nobody is required to dredge. It's at this point, there's no mandate. All we're all that is happening is that the city, that the township is getting the permit for people who want to dredge and who need to dredge, but there is no obligation to dredge at this point. But keep in mind, you may have a little bit of water and your neighbors may all be teaming together to dredge and it may be more cost effective for you to team with them, you know, just for your little bit of dredging. But, but certainly, you know, each property owner would end up paying for their, their, their share. So if you're not dredging as much as your neighbor, you know, obviously you would pay less. So, um, so no, you don't have to dredge, but, but you may, you may want to. Um, and, and your share is determined by the cubic yards that is removed from your, from your area. So j just to, yeah. Usually, yep. So Eric's reading questions. Yeah, I'm just gonna go through and see. We've answered a lot of these, you know, in other ways. So one is specifically, um, again, I'm not, I just don't know this, this, the street names. I, I, I know your town more by water than I do by roads. So I'm gonna, might need some help here. Uh, but we live at the end of Toonsbrook Drive near Old Hooper. Since Sandy nearby bulkheading and Sailor's Quay dredging, our water depth is about eight inches. We can't use our jet skis and have had to rent a slip at Sailor's Quay for our boat. Um, so that is the north branch of the of the Kettle Creek. Um, okay, and that's, yeah. So that area was evaluated. Um, again, we just we have the we have the priority areas that we just identified here. Uh, tonight, the entire the entire town was was evaluated, and the permit will cover all of it. Uh, so again, this would be, you know, it would be able to be dredged once those once those permits are in place. There was another question from someone um, about the peninsula, and I just for the life of me, I didn't know which peninsula they were referring to. So if they wanted to repost or, or hit me back with which peninsula that would be helpful. 
Um, I think a lot of these other remaining questions are about taxes that we've you know, talked about previously and town's responsibility and what, what is and isn't. It, the town is the town isn't obligated to dredge. Um, it, I know we've done it in the past and you're welcome that that was a lucky situation that you got it the once. Um, it's, it's just not sustainable for the township to, to be able to. I mean, $1.8 million, we, we've spent a half a million dollars already in getting to the point where we've applied for a permit. We still have to secure an agreement and funding to pay per cubic yard to use the DOT dredge hole. Um, and we have to still seek additional areas where we can dispose of material above and beyond the 50,000 cubic yards because there's a big gap between 50,000 and a potential for 1.8 million. Now we're not, we didn't start out with 1.8 million looking because that's what the town could dredge township wide. However, you know, a lot of people aren't gonna wanna dredge. Even if you live on the water, a lot of people live on the water could care less about having a boat. But I just wanted to seek the opportunity to have everyone be able to dredge. So I'm just gonna look back here. We have a question about the Masquan River area included in the brick permit. Uh, so you can see those channels that are through the Manasquan River in blue. Uh, no, that's the Matitacock. Matitacock, sorry, Manasquan. Is to no. the north. I don't know if you can no. see it in this particular site, but it is included in the permit application. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Like I said, we have one of the larger, longest shorelines in the state, so trying to get it all on one map was... <laughs> I think you told me at one point it was 103 miles, depending on the tide, which... Correct. Right is a lot. It is a lot. And then there's the peninsula is on Long Pond Cove. Did you, we, you see that? The question on the, on the Long Pond Peninsula. Oh, so the peninsula was recently subdivided and now it's all private property. So that's something, if you wanna discuss a beneficial reuse of the material on the peninsula, that's certainly a dialogue you can engage in through the township. Um, we had also talked about, uh, you know, if you if you want to do your own dredging and you wanted to use ACT because you didn't have an engineer to, in the event you have to do, you know, chemical sampling of your soil or you wanted to combine it with a bulkhead project about going through the township through an escrow account. Um, and if we can identify beneficial use of the material and all of the homeowners, individual homeowners were amicable to it, um, I would love to be able to use that to its greatest extent practical. I mean, I'm sure the material that we could deposit, I speculate the material we could deposit at the peninsula in Long Pond is greater than the material we'd be taking out of your channel. So, I mean, if I could put even more material there from other areas of the municipality, that would be win-win for me. You know, you, you get the shoreline stabilization and help the degrading of the wetland on your property. Um, you also get the storm protection and you get your dredging and the township finds another place to to utilize for disposal. I think we have Nancy Golden again and I'm, I know it's, I can't remember her husband's name at the moment, but hang on. Fred. Fred, Fred. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> my apologies. Tried to catch all these names there. If anyway, she's a better half anyway, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'm here. <laughs> so one of our homeowners that has submitted a question I don't think has been addressed, which is uh, Linda Giordano. So there is a lake, Miramar Lake, that is at the end of Lake Point Drive and Neptune Circle that has five homes on it and a long, has a large, uh, sizable lake, couple acres, and then a long channel, a couple hundred yards through marshland out into the bay. And so the question is, is there eligibility for dredging this because it's through the marshland, who would pay for it, what are the possibilities? It, it is a submitted question. Mm -hmm. So I think I see Travis like typing frantically trying to pull up that location. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, typically dredging through wetlands is prohibited. Um, Travis, what do, you, what do you see? 
It's a, it's a very tough area. We have it included in the permit. So it's um, it's a, it's an isolated area that sits back. You have to go through uh, the wetlands. There's an existing channel through there. It's very narrow. Um, I forget exactly what the width we ended up on, on the channel running through there. Um, we have it, or haven't included it? It is included. Uh. So it, it, it would have been at least 20 foot wide, but it, it's, it's a tough area. It is included in the permit. Thank you. Anticipate it being scrutinized? Like I know we're I know that we're going to see scrutiny in the evaluation of Seawood Harbor at the mouth of that lagoon, Superior Lagoon. I mean, I, or do we anticipate comment on that particular location? Yeah, yeah, potentially. So there are a handful of areas that we identified when the permit was submitted that are um, uh, deviate from the standard offset that we have from vegetated shoreline areas. That would be one of them. Uh, but in order to maintain navigable conditions to that area, there's a technical impracticability of observing the offset. So um, there may be some pushback, there may be some comments, um, but there aren't a lot of options uh, in order to maintain navigation through there. I'm just trying to pull it up. Okay. Did that answer your question, Fred? We'll try to work some magic there, but there's no guarantees, obviously. I think it's the same problem we have with the mouth and the channel at uh, at um, the lagoon system at Seaward Harbor. It, it, you know, in order to maintain navigable channel for the hundred and some odd homes in here, that has to be open. So it, it's it's uh, critical. We hear you. Okay. Do we? I think we've gotten to all of the questions. Go through them real quick. Make sure I got them all. Yeah. If we have missed something, as when we close this out, or if you think of another question that you didn't have answered, um, you will be able to, to submit any of those questions on the brick dredging at Act Engineers website. We will be monitoring that as follow-up to um, what we presented tonight and, and uh, ongoing. So, you know, feel free to add any other questions or, or if your neighbors didn't get on, tonight and have some questions that they would like answered, just tell them about the um, ability to go to the um, website to do so. And I believe oh. the township will post this presentation on, on the township website. So if, if you came in late, a couple of these questions I see that may not seem answered were answered earlier. So I don't know if you came in late or, or just missed it, all the excitement. Um, <laughs> But uh, we will be posting the whole presentation to the township website. So you will be get uh, when the presentation ends. You will be getting a survey. We ask that you uh, just take a couple minutes, fill that out. Uh, that would be very helpful. And if you uh, are going, we will. If you're wanting to receive the uh, Google link uh, for the Google Earth link for the bathymetry, we will. Uh, forward that to you. Uh, I will warn you that it, you know, that we will send you a link to download that file. Uh, it is a very large file um, with some instructions on how to do that. So you'll have that uh, for your use. And we will post. Um, we talked uh, to the to the town, and they will post all of the plans from the permit application onto the city's website. But again, that may take a little bit of time just because of sheer size. So just give us a little bit of time to get that uploaded. Uh, and we'll have everything on the township's website uh, soon. There are a couple more questions that came back in, Eric. Do you want you? Uh, let's just take a few minutes to. Uh, um, one of the questions was, "What is the date that we will stop pushing paper and start digging sand?" <laughs> and <laughs> Janetta, I think, has addressed that. Janetta, would you like to reinforce what you said about the timing of the permit? So permit applications are in and they're pending. Um, it's a it's a it's a struggle. It's but it's what we do, and um, and I like to think I do it I do it pretty good. Um, so we expect permits hopefully by the end of the year. Um, then we have a dredging restriction from January one to May thirty first. So you know realistically, um, the earliest that dredging could probably happen would be the fall of twenty twenty two, right? 
right, right. Travis nod or shake your head or yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's nodding okay Sorry. yeah uh, unfortunately it's it's a it's a process and and it's not easy and um but once it's done um, it's a huge um, hurdle that we've overcome, and the township has spent considerable funds on um, the upfront bathymetry, the sediment sampling. Like I said, there was over 100 samples collected. Um, the permit application fee alone was $30,000. Um, the engineering, the environmental work. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a giant. I, I know it seems like a long slow arduous process but um but where we are is is definitely forward of where we've ever been and it's a huge step forward and, and i'm just going to add to that you know um because i'm reading the last one of the last statements um on the q a and it says that's a completely ridiculous time frame and i just want to reinforce the fact that that time frame is really up to the permitting agencies it's new jersey d EP as well as the Army Corps of Engineers and there is nothing that the town or we can do to advance that in any way. So we are doing our best to push it and, and we certainly have um, been successful to date with making things happen, but best case scenario is what you're hearing tonight. So we I want just wanna, I wanna say too that, you know, Brick is on the forefront of, of doing, these are unique permits in the state of New Jersey. There are a handful of these out there at this point. Uh, Brick has really stepped up and, got, and, and gotten this township wide permit. Um, it, is, it is a huge lift um, and the agencies appreciate the, the, all of it coming in in one shot so they can look at it uh, as a holistic plan, uh, but it does take time. So I just wanted to uh, say kudos to the town uh, for, for pulling this together. Um, Thank so. you. <laughs> All right, so I think, the experts. I think that um, we've answered hopefully all of the questions and I just wanna say thank you for joining us tonight. Remember that any questions you have, just you know, send, send them to the um, brick dredging at Act Engineers, and we certainly want to work with you as best we can, and the town has done great things to advance this. So I'm gonna say thank you and good night, unless I should say, does anyone else from Brick, meaning Alyssa or Joanne, do you wanna say anything or are you fine? You wanna just? I'll just say thank you very much for um, this informative update and thank you to all the residents who took their time to um, chime in tonight and um, get get some education on the status. So thanks to all. Thank you. Good night. Good night.